Good day, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to come to you with a video today, and it's all about how do you know that you are saved? How do you really know whether or not you are saved? What is the assurance you have that when Jesus gets here, that you will be with him in paradise? Now, for a long while, let me just give you my personal testimony first. For a long while, for the majority of my Christian life, actually, I believed that I was saved. And the Lord had revealed to me recently that I really was not saved. Because in my mind, in my estimation, I was saved. Because I had confessed, I had said the sinner's prayer, I had gone through water baptism, and I was living the Christian life. I was going to church regularly. I was keeping the Ten Commandments. And I was being obedient to Jesus Christ. And I believed that I was saved. But the Lord has revealed to me that really, I was basing my salvation on my own self-righteousness. Basing my salvation on on myself, my own self-effort. And really, that is not what the Bible says about salvation. And I want to share with you today exactly what the Bible says about salvation and how you can know for certain whether you are saved or not. Now, turn with me, if you will. We're going to look at Matthew chapter... Sorry. Mark. The book of Mark. Mark... Chapter 16, verses 14 to 18. Mark, chapter 16, verses 14 to 18. And it says, Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now let's break this down a little bit here. Jesus is saying, and he says it very clearly. He says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And then he goes on further to say, these are the signs that shall follow those who believe. They shall cast out demons in my name. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, it's clear. Jesus says these are the things you need to do in order to be saved. You need to be one. You need to believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And two, you need to be baptized. Now, when Jesus says you need to be baptized, what is he talking about? He is talking about baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of us believe that Jesus is talking about water baptism. But I, I can assure you that he's not here talking about water baptism. Jesus is talking about baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, how do I know that he's talking about baptism in the Holy Spirit? I know because remember when Jesus was crucified on the cross and there were two thieves, one on the right, one on the left. And one thief said to him, you are Jesus. Why don't you save us and save yourself? And the other thief humbled himself and said, this is the Messiah. This is Jesus. And he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you enter paradise. 
And Jesus said to him, Today you shall be with me in paradise. Now, Jesus saying that says to us that this thief was saved. Jesus was giving him the reassurance that he would indeed be in heaven with him on that very day. Once he died, he would be in heaven with him. Did this thief undergo water baptism? No, he didn't. So we can safely assume that the baptism that he underwent was baptism in the Holy Spirit. And that is the only way you can be saved. This thief believed that Jesus Christ would raise from the dead and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And Jesus assured him that he would be with him in paradise today. So we know that he's talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, if we look in the book of Romans, let's go there. Romans chapter 10, I think it is. Chapter 10. Or chapter yes Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shall be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation now you might be wondering paul is saying here that in order for you to say you for you to be saved you must confess with your mouth that jesus is lord and you must believe on the other hand we see jesus saying in order for you to be saved you must believe and you must be baptized in the holy spirit now it would appear on first look that what jesus is saying and what paul is saying are two different things but in truth and in fact they are saying the same thing when paul talks about confessing with your mouth that jesus is lord he is not saying just saying with your mouth jesus is lord and believing that that will save you that is not what paul is referring to he is actually referring to when he says confess with your mouth He's actually referring to being baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is confirmed by speaking in tongues. We see in the Bible where Paul says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. What is that saying? Everybody can open their mouth. You can open your mouth and say Jesus is Lord. Anybody can do that. So this is not what Paul is talking about. Paul is saying, you cannot confess Jesus as Lord except by the Holy Spirit. You cannot say Jesus is Lord unless the Holy Spirit says it through you. When you speak in tongues, when the Holy Spirit gives you utterance, that is saying Jesus is Lord. That is saying Jesus is in me. He is Lord of my life. That is the confession with the mouth. Something that comes out of the mouth. Now, belief alone will not save you. The Bible says even the demons believe and tremble. You must be believe and you must be baptized. You must confess with your mouth. You must speak in new tongues. And this is what will say you are saved you must believe and you must be baptized jesus said remember we read it earlier these signs shall follow those that believe they shall speak with new tongues you shall speak with new tongues now my church that i i was going to for many years, several years the church that i went to did not believe and still does not believe in speaking in tongues. They believe that speaking in tongues is something of the past, something that is no longer relevant, and it is not something that every believer needs to be able to do. And I am telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that is false. You must believe, you must be baptized in the Holy Spirit, 
and confess it with your mouth by speaking in new tongues in order for you to be saved. Now, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is a deposit in us. It is a guarantee. It guarantees that which is to come. It guarantees that on the day of our Lord Jesus, that we will be blameless. It guarantees, or should I say, He guarantees. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our salvation. Our salvation does not depend on our good works. Romans chapter 3, let's go there. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. And Paul says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. No flesh shall be justified by the deeds of the law. Keeping the commandments, doing good works, self-effort, self-righteousness will not justify you on that day. When you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, Christ is not looking for your self-righteousness. Christ is not looking for your good works. Christ is looking for his Holy Spirit within you, which is the guarantee that you will be blameless on the day of our, Christ, of, of our Lord's coming. Christ, the Holy Spirit, is the guarantee. The Holy Spirit is the seal of our salvation. It has nothing to do with our good works. Now, you may be wondering, okay, well, I sin. I mess up sometimes. The Bible says there shall no sin enter into heaven. And I sin and I mess up sometimes. So how, how is that going to work out? Well, once you receive the Holy Spirit, the Bible says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. In the same way, when you and I believe God, it is credited to us as righteousness. We have Christ's righteousness. Once we believe in him, we are righteous. It, our righteousness does not come from our works. It does not come from our obedience. Our righteousness is Christ's righteousness that we have received. He imputes it unto us. Our belief, once we believe, he imputes our belief unto us as righteousness. And so when you sin, Christ does not, Jesus, God does not see your sin. He is looking, when he is judging, he's not looking for whether or not he sees sin in your life. Once he sees the Holy Spirit in you, that Holy Spirit guarantees that you are righteous in his sight. So it has nothing, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, nothing. Salvation has nothing to do with whether or not you keep the Ten Commandments, you go to church. It has nothing to do with your works. It has nothing to do with your deeds. It has nothing to do with your actions. Salvation has to do with your belief in Jesus Christ and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So once you have that Holy Spirit, that is the guarantee that you are saved. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. That is the only guarantee that you are saved. And how will you know if you have the Holy Spirit? You will speak in new tongues. You will speak in the Holy Ghost. You will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I it took me a while to see this. As a matter of fact, I didn't see it until I started reading the Bible for myself. Because the church that I went to, this is what the churches preach. That if you do good works, if you say the sinner's prayer and follow it up with good works, that you will enter heaven. No, saying the sinner's prayer is not going to guarantee your place in heaven. The Bible says even the demons believe and tremble. Belief alone and saying with their mouth that Jesus is Lord in English is not going to guarantee you or whatever language you speak it is not going to guarantee you a place in heaven what is going to guarantee you a place in heaven is if when Jesus comes back he finds the Holy Spirit which he left once you believe he leaves that Holy Spirit as a guarantee in you and once he sees that Holy Spirit that is what saves you that is the guarantee that you are saved 
So ladies and gentlemen, the question is, my brothers and sisters, are you really saved? Are you really saved? Or have you been buying into the lie of the enemy that it is your good works that will save? You cannot save yourself. We cannot save ourselves. It doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter what we do. We cannot save ourselves. That thief on the cross, he deserved death on the cross. And he, he, was, he was evil. He was wicked. He was a thief. He broke the commandments. And yet, Jesus was telling this thief, that today you shall be with me in paradise. Why? Because he believed. Why? Because he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Those two things alone guarantee whether you are saved or not. So, are you really saved? If you are, if you have done the test on yourself and you find that you have, you are not saved, you still have an opportunity to be saved. You still have an opportunity to go back to God. Repent. Repent of your sins. Ask God to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and to come into your heart and you make him Lord of your life. And wait. There is, once you are saved, you are going to get a confirmation. You are going to speak in new tongues. And once you have that confirmation, you know that you are saved. Now, some persons immediately, as they believe in Jesus, and some persons, once they go water baptism, then immediately they start speaking in tongues. For other persons like myself, it happens afterwards. It does not have to happen at the same time. You, the belief and the baptism in the Holy Spirit don't have to happen at the same time. But they must have, both of them must happen. And if you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you need to ask God. You need to go to God and ask him to baptize you with his Holy Spirit. Sin out of your sincerity of heart. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. You will speak in new tongues. You will walk in, all, in the gifts of the Spirit. Like Jesus said, we would. The signs that would follow those who believe. And this is what I had on my heart and this is what the Lord has led me to share with you today. My prayer is that you will accept it and that you will work out your salvation by believing and being open and free to being baptized in the Holy Spirit because it is the only thing that will guarantee your salvation. Brothers and sisters, be blessed. And I will speak to you again soon. The Lord's coming is near. Let us be prepared. Let us be prepared. Let him not find us wanting when he comes. Be blessed in Jesus' name.